one of the most iconic monsters in D&D history. This monster has been seen from Greek mythology all the way to Disney films. None other than the Hydra. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the Hydra before we paint it. Now, I'm going to go into some lore here, coming straight from the Monster Manual. So, the Monster Manual says, The Hydra is a reptilian horror with a crocodilian body and multiple heads on long serpentine necks. Although its heads can be severed, the Hydra magically regrows them in short order. The Monster Manual continues by saying Hydras are natural swimmers dwelling in rivers along the lake shores and in ocean shallows, also wetland bogs. A hydra rarely requires shelter from the elements, so it doesn't normally have a layer. Only in colder climates are hydras drawn to protection of sheltered caverns and ruins, and when the hydra sleeps, at least one of its heads remain awake and alert making it very difficult to catch the, the creature by surprise. All right, let's get started. WizKids Deep Cuts Hydra. So I'm just gonna start by clipping this out of the box. Just being very careful not to harm the miniature. I'm already starting to love the detail on this miniature. It's incredible. WizKids really do a great job with their miniatures. It's pretty cool because Wids Kids gives you options here. There's a dual headed and a single here. So the real adventure was trying to get the damn things in there, but I finally realized that it's like connecting the pieces. So I guess I failed that in kindergarten. So finally got the damn things in. I'm gonna Start off by super gluing the model actually to the base here. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's paint. So I'm going to start out with a base coat here. It's called Stained Olive. And I really like this color because it gives you that nasty, murky, green, reptilian color. And it's going to capture very well here, I think. Now, I didn't really prime this model because WizKids does a pretty good job of pre-priming their miniatures. If you want to prime this, by all means, go right ahead. But I feel like we didn't need to for this. So I'm just making sure to spread out this paint. And what you guys, a little tip here for you guys is you wanna thin out your paints so that it gets in all the crevices here. You don't wanna leave out that detail. If your paint starts caking up, you're gonna not have as much detail because it's gonna cover up all the recesses. And you don't wanna do that. so. As you can see, my paint is very thin here, and I'm putting it on in very thin increments because I really want those scales and the recesses of the model here to really show through. So I'm just going to kind of spread around all that paint instead of whopping more paint on it. We can't forget about the tail here. So I'm just continuing to spread out this paint here. And I even put a base coat of the stained olive on the base of the miniature here. And I wanted to keep the ground in the same color scheme, almost like the Hydra has some camouflage in the area that it's in. I think it's gonna look really good when it's done.
So this is what we got so far. It's looking pretty good. I like the color. All right, time to work on the mouth while the base coat on the body is drying. So I'm coming in with, I believe it's called Entrail Pink. And I'm just putting a nice little base coat in the mouth here. And you could be messy here. Just try not to get a lot of it on the outside of the mouth. If it gets on a little bit of the periphery of it, that's okay. Because there are going to be some fleshy, gummy parts of the hydra's mouth here. So that's only going to add to your effect. Just be careful with it. All right, coming along quite nicely. Loving that intro pink in there. Looks pretty good. And guess what, guys? We're going in with a second base coat. Yep. A second base coat here. Only because the first coat didn't really cover the model how I wanted it. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of a heavier base coat here. It's still thinned out. So make sure you always, always, always thin out your paints here just because of the detail. So what I mean by that is I take a little bit of water and I mix it into the paint just to thin it out. All right, to start on the underside of the Hydra, I guess you can call it the belly or the armor plates, whatever it is. So I took some of that stained olive color and I added in like a tan, I think it's called Griffin Tan is what I added into it, just to give it a little bit of variation from the base coat on the skin or the scales of the hydra here. And again, just thinning out my paint, rinsing and repeating that step, putting a little bit more water on it, and voila. It doesn't take away the detail. So you can see my the paint is not fully covering the model, but that's okay because we're gonna put some more coats on here. It's gonna look really good when it's done, I promise just takes a little bit. It's kind of a tedious process here, but the end result is well worth it. Okay, so just finishing up the underbelly here, and I'm gonna start out dry brushing on the scales here. And what I did here, I took, again, that stained olive. I'm trying to keep the same color scheme here. So. I added a little bit of yellow into that stained olive, and I also added some white and mixed, mixed it together really good just to give a color variation, like a highlight here to the scales. 
And as you can see, it really makes that detail pop out. And those you can see those scales very, very well. It's almost like it is shimmering in the light. And it's pretty cool. All right. Starting to look really good here. Okay, so once that dries fully, I'm gonna go in and dry brush some more. Except this time, it's just some yellow here mixed with white. So what my idea was here is I'm trying to slowly build up that color. And what I mean by that is I'm going from darkest to lightest here without giving up all that detail. You could just slap on a lot of paint here, but it's not going to look right because you're going to cover up all the recesses. And I know I stress that a lot, but it's a good tip for you guys and hopefully you learn some. So just continuing to dry brush all that around the model. So another tip here when you guys are dry brushing, I don't use my brand spanking new brushes to dry brush. I use my older ones. And the reason being is the more you dry brush, the more it ruins your, your brushes. So you want to use an older brush that you're not really going to use for like a smooth base coat, if that makes sense. So I don't know if you've noticed, I've kind of alternated between going against the scales and with the scales. And the reason for that is I really want these scales to pop. Now, if I was to just go against the scales, it's just going to catch the highest point of the scale. Now, when I go with the scale, the dry brush is actually going to catch all of the scale. So... I'm getting both sides of the spectrum here. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit lighter color on the belly here. And I just took some of that desert tan and added in a little bit of white here along with the stained olive. And what that does is it gives us a nice little highlight here of the underbelly. And you guessed it, guys, more dry brushing. So I'm going in here with just some yellow. And that way I'm working directly from darker to light. So as you're going to see here, this is really going to pop out those scales. I love it. So I do apologize. I haven't been explaining how to dry brush. So... A lot of you guys are probably experienced painters, but some people might not be. So how to dry brush, you take a paper towel and you put some paint on your brush. And with that paper towel, you just run your brush back and forth on the paper towel. And you want to wipe off a lot of that paint until you get like a dry feeling on your brush. 
And then you just go across the model to catch all the, the high points of the model. And essentially, you're painting over the recesses and not covering them. So I'm gonna go in here with some green wash from Army Painter. And I really like the Army Painter's washes. There's only one problem with them, is when they dry, they dry very glossy. Now that could be a problem if you're painting like some kind of fabric or a cloak, something like that. You don't want your cloak to look glossy. You want it to be like a matte type finish. So the Army Painter, they also do have a gloss remover, and I use that a lot on fabric-y type stuff when I'm using washes. But for this instance, I think it's gonna look really good glossy because I want the Hydra to have like a very slimy, wet looking, scaly skin here. It's gonna look really nasty. So the thing about washes that you gotta remember is on the contrary to dry brushing, washes, you want them to go into the recesses. And I want this green wash to go down into the recesses here, just to make those scales even pop even more. Another good thing about washes is when you quote unquote paint these on, you can move them around to where you want them. So if you're not liking how it's looking, you can just run your brush over it and spread it out to make it more even toned. I think that's really cool. Okay, looking good. So while that's drying, I'm gonna go in with some red wash from Army Painter. And I'm just gonna put some red wash here into the mouth. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna seep into the recesses and create some shadows in the mouth. It's also gonna look kind of organic and maybe even a little bloody here, which is what I was going for. It looks really good. So next here, we're gonna go in with some dark wash here from Army Painter. Now, reptiles, their skin is kind of weird because their high points are darker. So I'm going to kind of simulate that. So I'm going to go in on the fins here and I'm going to put in some dark wash. Just kind of move that around into the recesses here. And I want the upper part of the scales to be a little bit darker just to almost have like a, a little stripe here on where the the scales or the fins are on here. And it's also gonna create some interesting looking shadows. So I'm going to continue on here and I'm going to put some more dark tone on the back of the miniature here just to kind of follow that spine all the way down and just continue moving that wash into the recesses here. So 
So after I'm done with that black wash, I'm gonna take some matte black here from Army Painter, and I'm gonna kind of pencil in the eyes here. Now, I wanna leave the middle part of the eye like the iris, and I want it to be kind of like a stripe, like a reptilian iris in that eye. So now I'm just going in with some brown wash from Army Painter, and I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did with the scales. Let's go in and make sure I have coverage and have that wash seep into the recesses to give us some nice shadowing. So the model's starting to look really good here. And I think we're almost done with it. So for now, I'm just gonna let it dry. So I'm taking some desert tan here and I'm gonna dry brush the environment that the Hydra is on here. And it's gonna give a nice contrast, but it's gonna be a very similar color scheme to what the Hydra is. And basically how I did that was, I just took some of my leftover paint that I already had on my palette and just did my dry brush technique here. All right, time to make some finishing touches. And I felt like the fins needed to be a little bit greener. The dark tone really darkened them up. So to get some color variation in there, I'm gonna go back in with some green wash here and just put them on the scales, the very, very tip tops of the scales and let them kind of seep down into those recesses. The end result actually looks really good. I'm glad I did this step. Yeah, definitely time to do some action shots. Let's roll the camera. There you have it tell me about what you thought about the video in the comments below if you like my channel please like the video subscribe and share this it would really help me out and i would very much appreciate it thank you guys so much for watching next week's episode i'm going to teach you guys how to build this thank you so much you guys have a great weekend